You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. And today I have uh, back in our studio again, Paul Angle, who's our director of the Brockton Public Library. Paul, always Eric, a pleasure. Always a pleasure, Mark. Um, people are probably sick of hearing this, but that's where I started out before people knew <laughs> me as the cable guy. I was the library guy. It was my first job, and it was fun to work there. I was officially a library page, mm -hmm. which meant I fetched the books back in the day. You had a buzzer. And it was closed stacks. Now That's it's right. open stacks. You can get your materials. You can go to the circulation desk. We have a, a bookstore. We've used books for sale mm -hmm. and materials. There's a children's room, and it's like way bigger than when I first worked there. It was a small, the original 1912, 1913 Carnegie Library right. up front. We added 48,000 square feet on in 2001. And so, it's a beautiful library. Well, and we're going to keep improving it. Mm -hmm. so, you know, we, we got to make sure we hold on to resources. We're looking for, like, historic grants for the front portion. We're trying to get the bricks That's repointed. Right. Yeah. Um, we are opened up the skylights. We have the beautiful 1933 mural from the WPA that talks about the People's University. That's right. Right above the brand-new makerspace right below in the room right there. Right. Um, and the makerspace is a new initiative with all sorts of uh, activities for for young people and you know I don't know I don't know what the age range is it could be anybody really um, yeah. and there are volunteers that help with that that's right specifically people that um, do things that um, you know not we would never work to replace any of the jobs in the library but these no. are volunteers that have specialties like coding for computers right code and connect. electronics and Good old-fashioned soldering I saw there <laughs> on the day of the open house. That's something that's an art and a skill, and hopefully doesn't set, a, set, set too many smoke detectors off. Well, let's hope not. Let's you know? hope not. But um, how about the everyday stuff? They're, they're, I mean, I don't think people really realize what they get out of a public library, okay? And you mm -hmm. went all the way to Washington to remind our folks within the last couple of weeks how valuable that is. I, I did, along with about a thousand other libraries nationally and, and 12 delegates from Massachusetts. Okay, so talk, ab talk about the everyday programs and then we'll get back into the trip a little okay. bit. Okay. Um, every week we run programming that's pretty consistent uh, throughout the year. A lot of it is geared towards our children and in our children's library. Mm -hmm. um, some of those are like, um, and some of them happen at the branches, I should say. Okay. Uh, at the branches, we have walking craft times um, at both at east and west, and those happen, generally speaking, from 2 to 7 uh, and, and uh, 3 to 7 during the days that the uh, branches are open late. Mm -hmm. We do um, programming like Music Together, which is a, a limited program. We only can do about 20 seats for that, so... If you want to take uh, advantage of some of those programs, you have to make sure you sign up and, and sign up early. Mm -hmm. uh, those classes fill up very quickly. And, and that kind of underscores how important the library is to our community, that we have these events like the Music Together and um, some of our movies, and they fill up very quickly, especially dr uh, uh, during vacation weeks. Um, the library is a community center. The library is a place to, to educate, to train, uh, we have ESL programs that run there um, every week. M uh, Melise runs those programs, and um, we're looking to expand that, and we're looking to expand that into perhaps um, um, a study and a, a, and a uh, oral history of the immigrant population, the immigrant experience in Brockton. Uh, we also, like I said, we have movies that happen for, for the kids mainly. Um, uh, they happen every week. Uh, we also have uh, kn knitting. Uh, Michelle Poor does a knitting class. Uh, every week, every Saturday, she has class up in, I believe, the Feinberg Room. Um, and, they're, and they're used. People come in to, to sit down and, and take advantage of these. Like I've, I've said before, they're all free. We don't, mm -hmm. we don't charge for any of our programming. That's per the mandate of a public library. And um, it, it really brings the community together. We, we, we had a wonderful, I, I don't want to speak in the past tense, but we had a wonderful event this past Saturday where we had um, a full house based around a geography right. program. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it was full because we, we, we were evangelizing on this program and, and, and really touching, reaching out to the community. Mm -hmm. So the community needs to know we're here and needs to know we're doing these free events and they're regular events, uh, things that you can come into and just uh, a lot of them are just walk-in events like the crafts where you can just 
sit down and have some fun. And there are lots of groups that use our library Absolutely. in the community room downstairs. So you might see a poster up someplace mm -hmm. or else, and, and you don't always have to be a member of that group. First of all, anything that happens in the library, it, it, there's no fees. No fees. People can't collect money. That's part of our policies. That's right. Uh, we've broadened that to include, I know the Garden Club does programs there. Yes, we they do. We had the Coin Week there. The, yeah, the Richard, Coin, yeah, Richard Hand did that. We had the Art uh, with the Brain Injury yep. Association. I, I mean, back in the day when I first worked there, it used to be the old fashioned. It was film strips, and we used to have <laughs> travel logs, which oh, people yeah. talked about where they went to travel. It was all, almost kind of like home movies and slides, mm -hmm. but it was fun because it wasn't so, there was no internet there. You know, you either saw a book or saw someone's pictures. Mm -hmm. Now you can, now we have technology as well. We do have a projector in the room, mm -hmm. in different rooms. People can bring bring the slides. The, the only thing we don't do there is we don't do commercial and we don't do sales. Right. Okay. But um, there's stuff there that's invaluable, a historical room. Mm -hmm. um, we have microfilm and microfiche, which are old, old editions of the Enterprise newspaper. If you're a history right. buff like me and you're looking to find something um, for some kind of, uh, you know, to talk about the history of Brockton, it's all there. Um, we partner with historical society yes, from do. time to time. Um, and then there's arts events, cultural events. I want to bring back the murder in the library place, so we're going to have to figure out a way to do that. Maybe we'll do that during political season. I don't know. We kill <laughs> off all the candidates, and you know, it, it can be similar to what's going on in real life, right? Okay. But we get two minutes left, so I just wanted to ask you if you would uh, elaborate a little bit on the trip that you went on. Um, we uh, sent you as an ambassador delegate to, mm -hmm. to D.C. You met with some of the congressional staff. How about you take a minute and tell me? It was a wonderful experience uh, on so many levels. I don't know if I can fit it all in in a minute, but I'll try. Um, I represented, uh, as per our strategy, the, the transition, the gateway cities in Massachusetts and how the library is uh, uh, an integral part of those communities establishing themselves and, and raising up through the, through, through the, through the um, process of either uh, gaining citizenship or learning how to speak English. Uh, I talked about how the, the maker space, as we've talked about, is an important part for our, our communities and other gateway communities because students uh, and, uh, need to have access to these things, and, and some of them just don't have the resources at home. Um, I, I had a, a great meeting with the president of the Boston Public Library as well, um, uh, talking about how we can partner up and collaborate in, in, in new and different ways. And I met with the, uh, the congressional staffs of uh, Elizabeth Warren and Ed Markey and uh, Stephen Lynch. Well, we're gonna we'll need a separate <laughs> segment for this, okay? But it'll pay off because yeah. we know that we have uh, some very good elected officials in Massachusetts that support public libraries strongly. Absolutely, and we want to build on those partnerships. Absolutely. So, uh, lastly, website www.brocktonpubliclibrary.org. Main phone number 508-580-7890 and you get to the right ones. Look at the website, it has all the information. Check out Facebook, check out Twitter, and mm -hmm. most of all, visit the library. Yes. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, Mark. Good to see you again. Good to see you. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here on the City of Champions.